Hello and welcome to today's water cooler chat, Finding Success Through Teamwork, hosted by Virtual Patent Gateway and facilitated by Meredith Schoenfeld, Associate Solicitor at the USPTO. Meredith is currently on assignment at the Department of Commerce in the office of Secretary Gina Raimondo. Virtual Patent Gateway founder Ashley Chung has a passion for supporting young creatives in the workplace and is committed to developing a growth mindset within VPG. Joining us today is Brendan Heinz Eich, a defender who recently signed a two-year contract with the MLS team DC United. Before he turned professional, Brendan played four years of NCAA Division I soccer with Creighton University and the University of South Florida. This webinar is live on Facebook and LinkedIn and is being recorded for future use. We'll be raffling off a signed DC United jersey and other prizes toward the end of the hour, so stick around for your chance to win. And with that, I'll hand it over to Meredith. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome and thank you for being here. Uh, and thank you, Brendan. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about teamwork. And uh, that's obviously a very important part of being a soccer player. So um, Brendan, why don't you tell us um, why did you decide to become a defender, which is probably the, the biggest team player on the soccer field. You don't have the, the glory of scoring the goals or the one behind the net. So it's definitely kind of the biggest team player position. So yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Well, I can give you the, the honest answer. I can give you the answer that I think many people think that they want to hear, which is that many defenders think that they were created to be defenders. But most of the time, most defenders were not good enough to be attackers. So they pushed <laughs> us in the back and made us defend the other goal. Um, no, it is. It is, it is um, a, crucial, a crucial part of my job is communication. I'm basically the, the player on the field that sees everything. And it's my job to make sure everybody is in the right position to avoid, you know, certain situations that we don't want to be in as a team. Um, it's tricky because you have your own position to play as well. So in that you have obviously the individual role of, you know, you have a job as, as a defender to make sure um, you are doing your assigned duties, but at the same time, you're, you are asked. Um, and I guess it's given us part of the position to, to lead others and um, to get guys in, into the right spots. So um, I think as I got older and I realized that um, communication was one of my stronger skills as a professional athlete. I mean, of course, with my skills and everything, but communication was one of my stronger suits um, that allowed me to, to move further back in the field because I could basically dictate get the game a little bit more with how I saw it. and. Um, yeah, as, as I've developed more and more, I think it's become um, um, a continued learning process because usually defenders are the older players on the field. Um, and so most of my career, I've been one of the youngest players that plays when I'm on the field. And it's not easy when you are a younger player and you have to you know, command and order older players around who have experience and don't want to hear from a younger guy yapping in their <laughs> ear and everything. So, um, but yeah, it comes with, it comes with um, consistent rep you know, repetition. And I think um, as the years have gone, gone by, it's become something that I've begun to enjoy more and more because I do like being able to be a, a secondary coach, you can say on the field to, to help the team. So um, yeah, there's, there's no exact way to answer your question. Besides I, I grew up playing as a, as a striker. I was never a defender. So when I was younger, I was a striker. I was the guy who was the furthest up the field and I was the one scoring the goals and um, was getting all the credit. And I was the one in the paper and you no know, defenders have no credit. You know, we sit in the back and we do our job and nobody writes about us you know, <laughs> unless we make a mistake and it's, then it's, you know, something bad about us, but um, it's usually a, a very uh, grueling job that gets no, no credit at all, which, you learn to, to understand that that's the beauty of the job is that it's unseen. And so, um, but um, yeah, I think that's something that I have come to, to, to realize. And, and yeah, so I, I enjoy every time the, the challenge of, of, of that job that it, that it brings. Uh, awesome. So actually that touches on one of my other questions. Like you said, defenders are kind of like, you can only do something wrong, right? Like you only get yep. attention when something wrong happens. Right. So like, let's yeah. say, you know, one of your 
plays does negatively affect the team. Like, let's say, you know, you foul someone in the box or mm -hmm. you get a handball or, you know, like own goal, even like how, how do you handle all those have happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> those kinds of situations, like how, you know, how do you kind of like, how does the team handle it? How do you handle it personally? Cause those are obviously like very difficult situations and you don't kind of get to redeem yourself with a goal or, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. So, well, you try, but you yeah, know, yeah, that's not, true. Not there, that easy. I, yeah. I think, there's been some defenders. I know Steve Burnbaum scored this year, yeah. so yeah, that's definitely right. some that's right. defensive goals. Yeah. But <laughs> no, it, again, it's 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 part of the job. I mean, we understand that. Yeah, if we do make a mistake, it's highlighted because there's no one there to save us. You know, maybe besides the goalkeeper. But usually, when a central defender makes a bad mistake, it usually leads to a goal. And um, no, I think again, it's part of it's part of knowing that that position requires the maturity to to move on from a, a bad mistake, um, especially when there's a lot of time left in the game. I've made really bad mistakes in my career in the first minute of the game. I've made a bad mistake in the 90th minute of the game. It, it just kind of is what it is. And I think um, the thing that I quickly realized is that it's never as bad in your head um, as you think it is. I think people, you'll highlight it in your head, like, oh my gosh, I just made the biggest mistake in my whole life. And everybody's seeing it. It's you magnify it a lot more in your own head. And I think the quicker you can move on and get back into, you know, doing what your job is, it's, it's for the better, it's for the better of yourself and for the team. So, um, no, I think just quickly try to, to, to shake it off and realize you still have a lot of time left. And I think that's uh, indicative of something that can happen in life as well. If you make a bad mistake that, yeah, it was a mistake and you can admit it and acknowledge it. And, and move on and obviously hope to not make the same mistake again, but realizing that the guy next to you has made a lot of mistakes. The guy on the other side has made a lot of mistakes. And um, it, it's like I said, it's also part of, of like where I am as a person and also in my life. And I have to, to be in a mature um, position constantly. Um, I can't sit there and sulk and I can't sit there and feel bad for myself. And, um, no, I think I have people who are looking up to me, uh, younger players or players next to me that expect me to just, um, yeah, recognize that it was a mistake and, and move on. So hopefully it doesn't happen a lot because, you know, it's not easy <laughs> to consistently have those, those mistakes or whatever, but, um, yeah, it, it's, it's something that as, as professionals in our workspace, you know, we all make mistakes and I think it's just, um, I think it's important, like I said, again, to keep to to acknowledge it because it, if you just don't have the accountability factor, then that's worse. I don't like people that aren't accountable for their mistakes where they're always looking to point and just be brave and don't be um, shy and say it was my mistake. And, and I think the accountability factor is, is something that really also brings a lot of respect from other people when they say, yeah, wow, he, he owns up to it and, and he's ready to move on. So um, yeah. It, they've happened plenty and I'm sure many more will happen in my career but uh it's um it's something that again as I get older and and I learn how to deal with it more and more um it, it, I'm a little bit more at peace after something like that has happened and realize it's a learning moment rather than just to you know put my head down and sulk about it so <laughs> yeah um that's that's good and yeah like you said that accountability is definitely uh, applicable to all of us. I know, um, you know, personally in my own career, I have learned that, yes, you know, like people respect you a lot if you just say, you know, yes, I did this wrong. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, you know, and because, and, you know, we all, we all do make mistakes in our careers and personal life. And uh, yep. I think it, it is, it is a good lesson to learn to, to accept responsibility and people do respect you for that and it's not usually like the fallout is not usually as bad as you think it's going no. to be so no no um, so I know you had said about you know as a defender you have to kind of communicate and sort of you know be a almost a coach on the field uh because you're seeing you know kind of what's coming um so what are some of the difficulties because I know DC United and of course any soccer team we, there's been a lot of changes in the roster recently um so how do you handle you know kind of figuring out how to communicate with people when the people are changing and I know even some of the new players are from other countries and might not speak English or have the same kind of lingo or that you use so um how do you kind of handle communicating with new people all the time and sure. in new ways <laughs> 
Well, I mean, something we always say in this sport is that soccer has one language. Um, and so no matter what the language that the person that's playing it is speaking, usually, you know, you have enough general knowledge of being able to communicate through the way you move and through the way you play. And, um, you know, I've, I've been in teams where there's 15 different languages spoken. I've been with guys who I didn't know anything about them outside of their soccer career uh, or the, during the field. You know, I didn't know if they had wife or kids or anything, but somehow we were able to be really good friends inside the, you know, inside the pitch and communicate um, without even speaking the same language. It's um, it's the beauty of the game that we, you know, we figure it out as we go. And I think constant roster rotations are something that professional sports teams will deal with always. That's always part of the job, and it's something that you know I'll always have to be aware of that at any moment. Um, I can be on another roster and I have to deal with learning how to, you know, communicate with my two, my new teammates. But in this situation, because I've now been here, I guess, long enough, almost, yeah, 18 months, two years, um, you know, I have enough of a feel for the club and the way that the roster is, is situated that it's my job to help welcome players in and, and to make them feel as comfortable as possible. I've been in that situation where you're coming from a new country, you don't speak the language, you don't know where you're going to live next week, you know, what, what the grocery store is, what, you know, uh, any of the, the restaurants to go to it's So it's all new. And, and so I think getting people as comfortable as they can and, and adjust it as quickly as they can into their new um, reality is, is what makes them settle in and also open up and become a little bit more vulnerable to you and wanting to share with you and say, Hey, you know, actually I have a, I have a child and I have a wife and here's my family and you can get to know them. And, Instead of being like closed off and um, you know not letting anybody in, and then that that doesn't help with communication on the field. If you're not willing to be open to the person next to you and realize you know that these guys in the field next to you are your only people that are going to be able to help you in a game. You know the fans and stuff aren't going to come onto the field and help you score. Or I mean they can encourage you, but they can't help you do your job for you. It's only the people next to you. So yeah, that that line of communication um, and getting to know each other as quickly as possible is is essential for a team to to thrive so um i think at dc we've done a really good job with that uh trying to incorporate new guys as quickly as possible we have had a quite a turnover um from from last year and and from the years before so um it it's normal though i guess right. maybe it's a yeah. little different in, in another workspace where wow i don't know anybody i'm working next to anymore and i have people next to me in my locker that i don't even know who they are and um at a Workspace environment, maybe it's a little bit different because you know who's base go is going to be around you. Um, so, but again, that's just part of the job. And, and we know that as, as players, that the same thing can happen with the coach. The coach can be gone and then you have new coaches and you have new people who are in charge of you. So a new boss to, to learn and get to know. And so um, all part of the job, but it's like I said, sorry, that's my, my daughter crying. Um, <laughs> it's all it's all stuff that as players, we, we grow up around and so it's it's quite common for us to have um new people in all the time and it makes friendships a little bit hard though because when you have good friends and you know people that you really get along with and all of a sudden they're gone and that's it and it's like okay you know i i know it's hard it's part of how it is but you know you still miss that aspect of you know wanting to work with the same people all the time and some people are lucky enough to be in in teams where they get to be with a core group of guys for many years but now in professional sports that's pretty rare because people are constantly buying and selling players um like a fish market so it's um it's not as, as nice as it used to be yeah for sure so um you touched on those relationships do you guys do like team building exercises off the field or what kind of you know things do you do like as a team together to in order to build that teamwork yeah definitely i think especially in the beginning of the season when you do have a, a big roster overload, it's important to get everybody in and doing team building um, off the field. One of the things we did this year is we went actually to Fort Meade um, up in up in Maryland and um, we went there with the SWAT team and just basically got to see how they operate. And We did a, a long day of work with them, which was really grueling, but it basically heavily relied on teamwork and you know, I don't know who you are, but you know, if I'm going to go off this ladder, you better be there to catch me because otherwise I'm not going to have a good ending. So it was a kind of a, you know, jumping off the deep end and basically into the fire. Um, but it was a good way for us to quickly begin to trust each other. And um, a lot of teams don't go to that 
extreme all the time. I think there's, you know, a little yeah. bit more balance that you can have, but um, we, we try to incorporate it as, as much as possible. And I see these guys that I train with as much, if not more than my family. So, you know, it's, it's a second family, whether you like it or not, it's a second family. Same with, you know, how it is with, I'm sure with you guys, with your, with your workspace, um, especially when it's constant traveling and, and whatnot. So it's, as I was, when I was younger, I used to think um, it was really all about myself and I had to be committed to my journey and how I wanted to do things and the teammates around me, yeah, they were there, but I was focused on myself and going forward. And I think as I've gotten older, I've, I've really realized that in a team sport like this, it's impossible to be that way and get somewhere uh, and be successful. If, if you have too many individuals who are trying to work on their own just to progress their career to the next level, it really doesn't matter how well they do if the team is not doing well. Um, it, it doesn't look good on you anyway. So, and I've begun to enjoy it more and more because I'm in the second part of my career now. And I don't know, you know, if I'll have as many years as I had at the front end as I do at the back, but you know, these things that at the beginning you thought, oh, they're so annoying and it's so unnecessary. Mm -hmm. I've started to really enjoy because it's like, you know, I don't know if I'll ever get experiences like that again later in my career or in my, you know, next segment of my life and my work career. So, um, yeah, I, I've just really enjoyed more and more the camaraderie um, and and the experience of getting to know players from all over the world. You know, I've met players from countries I've never even imagined of going to, and now I have a friend that I would love to visit in, in, in any country that I want to go to because I know somebody that I've played with that's there and has a house there or has a family there. So that, that also makes it all the more, you know, worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very cool for sure. So I actually was a um, runner, so that's a very individualized sport. So compared yes. to, to soccer, I mean, there was, you know, a little bit of a team aspect where like, you know, the team gets points and the team can win or lose, but it definitely looks like your own performance is, is much yeah. more important. Um, so what are- Did you ever, did you ever wish that you were in a team sport besides being an individual, um, just as an individual? I mean, I, I liked the individual aspect of it and uh, just because I guess I just liked not feeling like I was affecting anybody else, like the yes. pressures of, you know, letting someone down or, you know, I felt like, okay, well, my time is my time and that is, um, but I mean, I think the camaraderie um, and now that I've worked more in team environments in my career, um, you know, I do patent litigation um, and I work, um, you know, we have like litigation teams and I definitely enjoy that aspect of kind of working together for a goal and being able to collaborate. Um, and, you know, while like running track, you know, you obviously got to know each other and you became close because yeah. you're doing all this grueling training together. Of it's course. not quite the, the same feeling of like, you know, working towards like, right. you know, when we win, we all win and, you know, like yeah. that excitement of, of the, well, I only ask because I've always thought about in myself what it would be like to work in an individual sport, you know, if it was golf or tennis or running or, you know, so sometimes I think about how that would be. And I always think that would be an interesting challenge being that I've been in team sports my whole life, you know, kind of goes back again to that accountability factor. You, know, you, you only let yourself down. So, you know, if you're okay with that, then that's fine. But I think like as humans, we're usually like the most difficult on ourselves or most like critical of our own performances. So I don't know how I would do in that because I think I would be extremely critical and I don't know how <laughs> yes. I'd be able to, you know, find that balance of oh, actually, okay, you did okay in this circumstance, in this situation. And yeah, so yeah. that's the nice no, thing about sure. teamwork is somebody maybe says, hey, you actually did a good job. And you're like, okay, if he thinks I did good, then that's actually good. And <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, no, track can be very hard because I mean, you're chasing a time and like most of the time you're not going to beat your time. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely can be mentally challenging. Like if you, you know, if you don't play well and your team wins, I guess you have at least, you know, that, <laughs> that ability yeah. to, to be happy. So, I mean, if you have a situation where you didn't play well and the team you know, does win, like, do you have mixed emotions or uh, or vice versa, where you play really well and the team loses, like what, what does that feel For sure, like? for sure. I think you always have to be still aware of your own performance, whether it was, was good or, or poor. Um, I think it's much easier for me to, at this stage, 
have a really bad game, but the team wins because the feeling of, of a team performance um, and getting the result you're looking for as a team is much better than having a great performance yourself and then getting nothing out of it. Um, the way we work is if you have a full week of work and then you come to the weekend and then you get nothing out of that, you know, that day, zero points right. and you, then the whole work week was basically for nothing. And it's hard because I mean, that's happened quite a lot this year. Um, but in years past where, you know, you, you kind of want to expect that you're going to have something come on the weekend. It's your reward of basically being able to play and then hopefully getting something back in return, which is a, you know, a win. And so um, I think it's much, much, again, much, much easier to have. I, I, I would say it's, I say this not so gently, but it's much, much easier to have a bad performance myself and the team wins than, than the other way around. I still am very upset that I didn't play <laughs> well, but I'm sure. okay. I can be at peace with that if the team is able to, to succeed. Because again, you don't go anywhere. If I have a great performance every single game, but the team loses every single game, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so. true for sure. Yeah. Uh, so do you have um, some idols in soccer that like who would, you know, that you find inspiration from? You know, I used to when I was younger because I grew up wanting to play against, you know, or wanted to be like certain players. And I think as I've gotten older, um, I don't really have idols anymore. I have players that I, I very much respect, especially players that have been able to stay at a very high level even when it was easier to just hang it up or easier to just go somewhere else and just make money and and yeah, collect checks and not have to work hard. So um, I wouldn't say there's one one particular person that I that I really follow. Um, I've been lucky enough now to play against a lot of the players that I watched growing up or just at the end of their career. Um, and so that's been a really big eye opener to realize that they weren't so far away from what you know you thought they were. You thought they were mm -hmm. these people that were untouchable and they were so far in another galaxy. And when you go to play against them, you realize that they're 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 still right there. It's just the way they do things and the way they think are just a slightly, slightly more elite than you. And, and they do it every single day and they've done it for 15 years and that's why they're at the highest level consistently. So um, yeah, I, I think it's just, it's just, that's one of the nice things about my, my job as it, I've kind of evolved more and more that I don't know if so many people get the chance to do is you, you get eventually a chance to, to be right next to your heroes or your idols and, and playing against them or playing with them. And um, I don't know a lot of other jobs that, that offer that opportunity. So that's why it's, it's, it's really special. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess the new DC United coach, Wayne Rooney is probably an idol to a lot of people. Definitely, um, definitely. Yeah. What, what is it like to work with him? He's, he's very much a player's coach. So he still feels like he's there in the locker room as a player. Um, even though, of course, he's a coach and he demands, you know, respect and, and that you listen to what he has to say. And, and he's very clear on his, on his messages, but he still is right there and, you know, in the thick of things with the players. And, you know, sometimes he joins the trainings and he's still the best player on the training <laughs> field, which is incredible. So it's, it's very nice. It's, it's a moment that um, when he was announced as a coach, it, it very much took me into a surreal mindset of wow that's that's a player I definitely watched growing up um I've known all about his career I've watched his documentaries so has every other player because he's such a, a well-known um superstar you know in, in our sport and so to have him now at the club is is it's a great honor to be you know a player underneath him um and as a coach he's very easy to to work with so it's it's nothing but a, a pleasure you know to to be there with him every day. And I think you you want to learn as much as you can from him, just soak up all the information he has because the stories he has and the people he's played with are the best of the best. So it's everything he has to say, everybody's ears are glued and listening. And so it's um, it's a nice, it's a really nice situation. And I'm even, I was always jealous of the players that got to play with him when he was there as a, as a player, you know? And so I always wondered, wow, how was that? And what was it like? And, you know, because I've been in some teams where there's some, some bigger names players but never like that where you know it's just a, such a big name comes into to a team like dc united um and basically draws attention from all over the world into the club because of him being there so um 
and now he's you know done it again obviously as a coach so um it's it's really nice yeah that's awesome so now i'm asking this question as a fan uh can you tell us some of the things that you really like about playing at dc united the fans for sure is, is is probably one of the best things i i have seen obviously many many fans in in my lifetime um from different countries and the the support that DC gives is second to none, honestly, in my opinion, and they're very critical as well. So it's, it's both <laughs> ends, which is good. It's good because you don't want to have fans that are always no problem, you know, every single game. And you will have fans like that. But I think the, the critical aspect makes it really feel like a real, real soccer club, because that's one of my things I feel about um American soccer before was that fans weren't really there to watch games. They were just there to, to have a hot dog and be with their family and I, you know people aren't but the people at dc united games are really locked into the games and that as a player is is everything because you know that they're watching you and they're depending on you to to make their week by winning the game and um that for me was a big big draw obviously um it's it's great to live up here in 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 dc and um it's a great area to be from for me and my family we were really happy when when this opportunity came across especially because we were having a baby last year right around this time. And so it was a perfect opportunity to come back and, um, you know, having, having obviously a new training facility and new, a new field and in a stadium that's Audi field, it's, it, it just makes everything, um, all that much better. So, um, I, I've been genuinely very happy at this club since I arrived here. And that's not something I say lightly or very often because I've been in, at a couple other clubs in my career where, I've had to just basically get through being at the club, if that makes sense. I've, I've enjoyed time, but then there's time where it's like, man, this is, I got to just show up and I got to keep doing my job. And at DC, it's never been like that. So, and I've been through some tough moments at DC with injuries and, and yeah. changes of coaches and changes of people that I really liked working with as players now gone. And, um, but my mindset hasn't changed. I mean, I've always, every game I've really enjoyed playing and training sessions. And so, um, I, I am genuinely a, as much a supporter of the club as, as you guys are. <laughs> Love that. That's good to hear. Yeah. Uh, congratulations on your baby. So is Thanks. she playing soccer yet or? Uh, no, she's just eating the ball if, if one is rolling. Over. <laughs> so everything just goes in the mouth right now. That's, that's our, that's our little girl. Do you think you will, will have her play soccer or? Whatever she wants to do. I, I of course, we'll roll the ball to her and see if she wants to kick it or throw it or whatever. And, I think she'll want to probably do something like her dad does, but if she wants to be into music or into education or whatever she wants to do, if she wants to be a patent lawyer or whatever she <laughs> wants to do, then, you know, that's, that's her call, whatever makes her, her happy. So um, I know the, the, the difficult side of this business as a soccer player. So that's something I never hope that she has to go through if she does play soccer, but um I think I'll do my best to protect her from that. So <laughs> sounds good. Can you share with us um, a little bit about what your training schedule is like and like, you know, kind of what the team's um, schedule is like? Yeah. I mean, as of right now, it's a very difficult part of the season because we have games yeah. basically every three or four days. So um, we actually have started to incorporate a couple more off days than normal, which is great for us. Um, but I would say normally, yeah, we, we usually train. If we have a normal week, Monday through Friday, we always are there at the training facility at 7.30 in the morning. And um, we usually have uh, meetings and a chance to eat breakfast and go over a few things before we, we start our, our pre warmups and, and then we have our training that's anywhere from one and a half to two hours, usually every day, depending on what day of the week it is. We work on certain things, whether it's fitness or um, specific moments in the game or tactics against another team. And then um, after that, we usually have a, a second workout, usually right after the training or again in the afternoon, depending on the day of the week. And we have lunch and guys will do their, their recovery with um, all the physios. And most players are, are gone by two o'clock in the afternoon. And the rest of the day is, is yours to do with it what you will and that's basically what will make or break a professional soccer player is what you do at that time <laughs> so a lot of guys um when they're younger go out to go shopping and go hang out with their friends and 
and go do different things that drain their energy that don't allow them to come back the next day and perform mm-hmm. at their best. And so, um, you know, I've, I've again, watched that as, as I've gotten older to see the way that different guys do different things. And I think the thing for me that stood out the most is the players who have lasted the longest in this type of business have figured out that you do have to have a life outside of, of the sport. Right. And that's difficult when you're young and you don't have a wife or a kid or any responsibilities because it's just you and you do whatever you want. And um, I struggled with that a lot at the beginning of my career, but obviously now I have other responsibilities with with my wife and my daughter and um, making sure that, you know, I'm there present for them. And I'm not just thinking about, oh, training and the game and this, you know, I can't have those kind of things. So I've tried to really focus on my life outside of soccer. And then that's really helped me appreciate my life inside of soccer. If that makes sense. Because then... Once the afternoon is done and I've had a full day with my wife and daughter and I've been like, you know, very focused on what that's going on. I wake up the next morning and I'm like, okay, yes, I'm excited to go and train and do the, you know, the next, the next day and be focused on that. So, um, you know, most of the days are relatively simple because it's, you know, you're only working until two o'clock in the afternoon. So from that standpoint, it's, it's nice. The difficult thing is we usually don't get weekends off. Right. We usually are traveling. <laughs> we have games that are at, you know, seven or eight 30 at night. And then, we have to fly back and we don't get back until three or three or four in the morning. And then we have training again the next day. So as easy as a life as it looks, it's <laughs> actually very difficult. And um, I always tell people that, you know, that joke that say, you know, professional sports, they have the best life and it's so easy. And I say, well, most of you guys don't have to do your job in front of 20,000 people, you know, on the weekend. So it's <laughs> a lot harder than it looks when people are all watching you do what you're supposed to be paid to do. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's uh that's part of the job so you know that's also one of the best things is that you got to perform in front of people and hopefully they enjoy your your craft and what you have to offer you know yeah no for sure actually i was reading an article today about um serena williams who's retiring yeah. from the sport and she mm-hmm. talked about that she will miss that performance aspect of it about you know kind of performing for a crowd and um i guess i never really thought of that that you know she kind of thinks of herself as like a performer an entertainer yeah. and um I don't know do you do you does it, you know does that cross your mind like do you think of yourself in that role at all or? well as a defender no right <laughs> because I'm not out there making things happen I'm not making the the, the crowd go ooh and ah I'm more just you know maybe maybe giving people a sigh you know a feeling of relief okay the goal the ball is not in the goal and the defender did his job um no, I, I don't think like that. I don't. I don't think of myself as as a performer. I more think of myself as a as a as a peg that's in a in a, in a team that needs to you know um, accomplish the goal uh, on the weekend, which is to win. So I'm I'm just another pawn that's there. But I think um, I take that role very seriously, even if it's a small role or a big role or whatever it may be. So um, I I just I just enjoy being part of 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 a group that. And the nice thing about soccer is that, you know, you don't realize that there's so many other people in the background that are counting on those 11 guys that go onto the field, you know, with the staff, the physios, the front room office, the scouts, um, all the people who are ex-players that are still members of the club that want to see the club succeed. They all rely on those guys that go onto the field and, and represent DC United every weekend. Um, because you're representing them, you're representing, you know, all of their history. Um, and so it's, it's something that um, one thing we try to tell players that are coming into the club that haven't been there that long. And I haven't been there that long, but I've already felt this is that you are representing a club that has had tremendous success in the, in the past, like we talked about. And that yeah. weighs on you because that is the expectation of the club. Even if that was 15 years ago, there's still an expectation that DC United should be winning the MLS every single year. And I think that's something that's exciting because um, I wouldn't want to be a part of a club that has, well, well, we'll just do whatever we have to do. And that that's that. And I think obviously it's been extremely frustrating for DC United fans, you know, and players over the past few years as we haven't been able to get to where we want to go. But don't think that doesn't wear in our minds constantly on a daily basis because, you know, every day when we walk into the training facility, we have a huge um, banner that shows all the history of DC United and that, is basically blasted in front of our faces like here's what the club is supposed to look like you better represent that every day and, and then emulate that on the field and bring that back again so we we are aware of that as, as players mm-hmm. and I think that's something that we try to also tell new players okay welcome to the club 
that's what we're trying to get to if you look right there so um that's something that uh we we try to kind of talk about almost every single day um as a club and as players and whatnot so so for i know we talked a lot about like communication and trust and obviously like when you're playing you know there's lots of like you know kind of no look passes and you have to be aware of where people are on the field and so how do you kind of build that rapport where you can kind of get in other people's head and know like where they're going to be and you know what's happening well as a defender it's my job to know who i'm playing against so i think obviously with scouting reports we're able to see you know who is the main targets for each player and it's our job to know exactly what that player likes to do and when he likes to do it and what his preferred foot is and you know, what space he likes to get into and where he's most dangerous. And so who's his link up player? Because a lot of players like to only play with one or two other guys on, right. on the field because they feel that those are the guys that can can withstand, you know, their their level of excellence and know where they're going to be. And so, um, you know, from the defender standpoint, it's just my job to, to understand the players I play against. The hardest thing is when you have a new player that comes to the league, you don't know anything about him and yeah, he can do whatever he wants because there's no scouting reports on him from from the league. But most of the time, when we played against the same players consistently, and credit to them, they still find ways to to get goals. But yeah, <laughs> just like us, it's just like us. You know, we rely on our guys up front to to make that magic happen. Those are the performers of the field. That's why they're the highest paid players because their job is to create something. It's you you have the creative you know um, ability of the freedom to create whatever you want up there, but we expect you to execute and, and to to score. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's again not as fun for me because you know I have a pretty <laughs> basic I have a pretty basic job. I should not be creative. I should not be doing backfield <laughs> flicks because that's not a good that's not a good situation for a defender. So I keep it pretty simple. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah. I feel like, I don't know, just watching you play, and this is just the fans. I mean, I feel like, you know, your play sometimes changes where you are, you know, kind of more aggressive or attacking more or, you know, bringing the ball up more. Uh, yeah. So I think, you know, I, I, I see I see some creativeness in your, yeah. your play or some, yeah. you know, adapting to the situation, I guess, adaptability maybe, but... Yeah, um, depending on what depending on what the coach tells me if he gives me the freedom then sure why not but most of the time <laughs> they they reel it back and they say easy easy <laughs> so yeah sure um i also did want to tell anyone for the chat if people have questions they can put it in the chat and uh we can ask them um and so uh, uh as you know in the, in the before you met my my stepdaughter who's um you know going to yeah. be trying out for high school soccer so yeah, do you have wonderful. advice for young players on how to build teamwork and how to you know be like a good team player well to, to build teamwork i think that that takes more than one person so I, I i think the most important thing is that she gets to know who she's playing with and i think um to to enjoy being there i think um one thing i haven't realized sadly until i was just maybe my last year or two is that having a smile on your face every day is so infectious mm -hmm. and as easy it is to say it actually will draw more people into you and want them to try to come and get to know you rather than being stone-faced and you know with no emotion and that that doesn't lead to people feeling like oh can i uh, you know come near that person or or whatnot so um just to enjoy i think you know mm -hmm. i wish i was back in in that you know age group again and i could you know start all over because it's it's such a fun time and they should only enjoy it there should be zero pressure and there should be no expectation and um i think don't be afraid as well be brave and um, believe in yourself that's an important one that's something that even as professionals we're still told all the time believe in ourselves so because you always have doubts i think as a person so you know when you have somebody tell you hey believe in yourself you're good enough to be here it kind of goes a long way, you know, especially for, for a young girl or, or boy who's, who's still just in love with the game for the game. You know, there's no business. It's just the game, you know? So um, that's, that's would be my, my, my main things I would say there. <laughs> so we have a, a chat, a question in the chat that says, how do you always keep so calm and centered? Sometimes people are annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I assume this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> thankfully, thankfully, when I was um, playing in Europe, a lot of times the guys that annoyed me the most, I didn't 
I didn't know what they were saying because of a different <laughs> language. So I didn't have an ability to, to process what they were saying. No, I, I, I work with a lot of good guys. I don't really have any guys. And this is a great thing as well about our rosters. We have all good people in the roster. Uh, and if you're not a good person, we'll, we'll snuff you out right away and we'll basically turn you into a good person or we'll kick you out of the group. So um, that's a good thing about what we have. Everybody's very easy to work with. That's good. Um, yeah. And then we have another question about how do you handle feedback that may seem unfair at times? It's part of the job. I think there's definitely been times where I've had coaches that have un unfairly criticized me for, for bad moments or, or situations. And it's their opinion and it's they're entitled to it as, as you know, as it, as it goes, I've had even teammates who have, have said things that I didn't agree with, but um, again, I think it's their opinion and, and it's whatever they want to think is, is up to them. It doesn't, it's not my job to, to, to be feeding into what other people think or, or to say, I know what I think about myself. And if I feel like I did something wrong, like, you know, I said earlier in the show that, you know, Hey, that was me guys. That was my mistake. And I've, I've done that before in meetings where, you know, before even you can see the mistake coming, I've just been like, yeah, well, I already know what's going to happen. This was me that made the mistake. There's no need to, to look at anyone else, you know? And I think that's, that's what, you know, allows me to, to feel okay about myself and sleep at, sleep at night because I know, okay, I was, I was accountable for the situation and, and that's that, but yeah, I think people are always going to have their, their say and, it's your opinion, you know, you're entitled to one. Hopefully the mm -hmm. next time your opinion is a little bit better about me and about the situation, but again, it's, it is what it is. Yeah, no, I think, I think we can all relate to that. You know, at, mm -hmm. at any job you work at, you definitely have to deal with different feedback uh, from different yeah. bosses. Um, For sure. So appreciate For sure. that answer. Um, we have another question about uh, athletes, you know, and especially soccer players, they have to be able to trust very quickly on the field. So, you know, how do you build that trust in a kind of quick manner? Yeah, we don't want to have, an, you know, we don't have any other choice. We basically have to, you know, welcome players in. And we've done that this year where guys come in on a Wednesday and he's played the game on Saturday and that's how it is. Um, again, it's, as I touched on, it's, it's easier in this line of business because you would hope that they at least know how to play soccer at a certain level. So, you know, that they know certain movements and you can learn you know, off each other pretty quickly. I think it takes one or two bad passes to quickly realize, you know, what their movement patterns are and, and you start to pick up on one another. But um, mostly it's just going up to them right away and welcoming them and, and trying to get to know them and tell them how I play and how you play. And let's let's try to work on it and practice and get it down as quickly as we can. And over a few games, we'll, we'll have it correct. So um, I've had a few players in my career where I haven't even played a minute with them and I've instantly synchronized with their movements and I've had players that I've played multiple games with and it's taken me time to figure out you know I, this guy is very unpredictable and we can't figure, so there's no there's no exact equation but um we ha we all try to do our best to make sure that um we were on the same page because it's very clear when you're not on the same page and um and that affects the team pretty quickly so especially if it's multiple guys. So yeah, we, we try to make sure we're not in that situation. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so I think we're getting towards the end of the time. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to share with everybody or some like highlights of your career? Or? No, I think I'm just, I'm just happy to be doing these, these types of these types of shows. I never thought of myself as a person who offered that much uh, in terms of teamwork and leadership. And so, um, you know, I'm happy to share with you know everybody what I can. I'm just happy to, to be even invited to something like this. So thank you to, to you guys for, for having me. I'm, it was an honor to, to be able to speak with you guys. So, um, and thanks also for being a fan of the, of the club. <laughs> means, means means everything to us so um yeah hopefully we can we can do better for you guys because <laughs> we know how much it, it means to you so that's uh that's about it yeah no thank you very much we appreciate your time and um i you know i'm sorry to say i am one of those supporters that's always supporting the team if you play them <laughs> poorly or badly we need you we need we 100 percent need people like you yes absolutely <laughs> absolutely but you're it's okay to be critical as well because i know how much you you, you care so thank you anyway for that
yeah, I will, I will, I will. Well, I, I don't know if I have it in me to be super critical <laughs> because I'm committed to the team. And so you're one of the rare ones then. There you go. <laughs> Thick or thin. So yes. <laughs> vamos yes. United. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, so I think it's now time um, for some raffles. It is time for some raffles. <laughs> Thank you. Let's give Brandon a big hand. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> awesome. Can you see the raffle screen? <laughs> All right, so we've got three raffles going on today. The first one is going to be for a VPG branded tote bag. Let's see who gets that. <laughs> she won. Russia won. That's my mom. <laughs> but I had nothing awesome. to do with Congrats. that. <laughs> Worth coming. All right. Our second prize is a bottle of wine, I believe, dealer's choice after the fact. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Trish. Trish, you got a bottle of wine. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. And then our last raffle today is for a signed DC United jersey from our very own Brendan. <laughs> that goes to <laughs> Fryla, whose actual name I don't know, but I do very much like his school. That's my husband. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> That worked out well. Yeah, I know, right? Well. <laughs> awesome. Congratulations to everyone who won a prize. <laughs> That's all I have. So feel free to chat amongst yourselves or go on with your day. Ashley, did you want to say anything? <laughs> well, do you like my background? <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Brandon and Meredith, uh, for like jumping on this, and it's um, so amazing. Well, uh, first of all, how I met Brandon, and I also met, I think Meredith. Uh, we didn't really work together, but I think we were on a virtual happy hour together one time. Yeah. But, um, when I uh, mm -hmm. realized that she's a DC United fan, I'm like, hmm. Maybe we could put a DC, you know, a patent lawyer and a professional soccer player together to talk about teamwork. So there we are. <laughs> uh, um, I'm sure that you know if anybody has any questions, feel free. You know, how often do you get Brandon to be on a show like this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I really think that this is uh, really amazing to have, you know, the fans and you know the team and. The you know, I'm going to be going to support you guys for my very first game to uh, thanks to Meredith for securing the mm -hmm. ticket. And then um, I'm going to go to my first professional soccer game to support DC United. Yay. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and I can be critical. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I may not know what I'm talking about, but I can be critical. Good. So, um, you know, if anyone else, you know, has any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, we could probably end this early. Um, and I will get, like, I'll probably touch base with the, the winners of the raffle so that we could get everything coordinated. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Definitely. Yeah. And Meredith, thank you. And thank you for your whole plan. <laughs> And mm -hmm. all the people that participated in this, this is pretty amazing. We have to do this more often. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 <laughs>